Please help us out. I just want to know. I just miss her so much and I love her so much. And I still, I know she's gone, but I am trying my very best to get through the day. She says, tell my mom I am not gone. Tell my mom I am not gone. And I'm going to tell you something. This is just for you. I'm going to totally ignore the audience. I'm going to tell you something. This, this advice is for Noelle only. It's not for anybody else, okay? So I don't want anybody else to take this out of context and be like, you know, this is what she said. This is what I should do. This is just for Noelle. So you guys are our audience, but this message is not for anybody but her. This is what your daughter says. She says, Mom, if you need to pretend that I'm at work, if you need to pretend that I'm on vacation, if you need to pretend that I'll be home tomorrow for one day at a time, that's okay. Because she says she keeps she keeps snapping herself into reality, like looking at the door thinking, you look at your watch like I wonder when she's going to be home from work. Yeah. Like, you keep looking at the watch going, like, I wonder what she'd like to eat. And for every minute, you forget, then you have to snap yourself back into it and remind yourself that she's gone, correct? Yes. She says, Mom, just stop doing that. Stop forcing yourself to remember my death. Stop forcing yourself to remember that I'm not coming back. She said, don't do that. You don't need to do that because she said, so quickly, more than a blink of an eye, and we'll be together again. I'm going to tell you something, Noelle, that I don't, I don't share this a lot, but for you, I feel like it's so necessary because I've got this anvil feeling in my chest going into my stomach, which is your head of grief. I personally have one daughter. I can't imagine losing her. I wouldn't know what to do with myself if I didn't have her. As an extension of me and a projection of everything I've ever wanted and my love and my friendship. And I don't know how to, I wouldn't know. And I don't want to ever know what that feels like. But what I'm saying is, she says, you don't need to remember my death. You only need to remember my life. And eventually, you'll have a new normal, but stop forcing yourself to remember my death because she keeps showing me that my mom always thinks she needs to go to the side of the road. And I don't know what the side of the road is, but she says she keeps thinking she needs to go to the side of the road and cover me up, or she needs to go to the side of the road and put up a, I don't know, a cross, or there's just something about the side of the road. Did she die on the side of a road? She died in the ambulance. Okay. On the road. Okay, did she, did, but do you know, you don't even know exactly where she died. You just know that she did. I know she died. Um, she lost her pulse on the way to the hospital. And I saw when they turned the corner, when the ambulance was turning the corner, I hollered at my son who was in the car with me. And I said, somebody's on top of her doing CPR. And she arrived at the hospital with no heartbeat. And they worked on her for 80 minutes and she died of a pulmonary, a saddle pulmonary embolism in her lungs. Yeah. Because what she keeps saying is, you don't need to think about that, even though you are. You don't need to think about that. You need to think about me because I'm still me, even without that body. You have such a hard time with the body because you created it. You created the body in which she came to you with. So for you, releasing her from that body is almost impossible because it's been with you since the first day of her conception. But if you can, your daughter is saying, I'm still me, even without my that body, mom. If you'll just let go of that a little bit longer and just remember my life, you and I will get through this together. Because she keeps saying to me, you know that I shouldn't have died when I did. And she shows me being very young and her death being very unexpected. And was her brother there when she died? 
Yes. 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 And y'all follow the ambulance from your home, correct? Yes. yes. She did she grab your hand or something? Because you weren't there right when she passed, but you came in on it. Yes, she right before she passed away, I had a hold of her hand. That's yes. what she said. I grabbed your hand, you grabbed mine, and that was pretty much the end of that. That was, that was like your last, and that's her right there on the pod. That's, that was your last embrace. She said, Mom, just tell yourself whatever you need to say to get through the day. Just tell her, just just tell me, just say that I'm at work. And if, I can get, if you can get up and you can eat breakfast and say, well, she'll be home later. It sounds crazy, but it's really not crazy to the fragile, delicate, grieving mind. I actually recommend this all the time for people that have lost somebody that they can't cope with because the coping is harder. It's like, which is harder, cancer or the, or the chemo? They both suck, they're both terrible. But we could change it in a way that just allows us to know that we we can just think of her in a different way because I'm gonna be honest, she doesn't want you grieving for her like this because she would never want this for you, love. She loves you, you're her best friend. You and her brother were her best friends. True? Yeah. She would never want you to grieve like this because she still is here and she's still around you and she's still herself. Yeah. We have to kind of come to the, uh, uh, the, the, what she's saying is, tell her I'm still me, tell her I'm still me. So I'm gonna say this to you. She is exactly the Shelby that you remember. The same energy, the same crazy laugh, the same joyful attitude, the same, you know, Get it done, Mom. Let's just do it. It'll be okay. The, the same personality that you knew, everything about her essence, her smell, her smile, her laugh, her memories, every bit of that is still intact within her. The only thing you lost that day was the actual vehicle for that, your essence. Does that make sense? I know I'm getting a little deeper than I would on some people's lives, but your daughter told me to tell you the truth. Yeah, I just, it's just been so hard for all of us. You didn't, you couldn't save her. Again, she says, Mom, this happened to me in such a way that I would have had to be in surgery on the table. They even said that in front of my body. She was there and they said to her, there's nothing that could be done. We did everything. And she said, if, and they, when you left, they said even if she had been on the table, it's a ninety like nine percent chance they could have stopped that embolism. Yep. But it was just so sudden and so unexpected, and it's so deadly. It's so deadly. I just don't understand because that day before anything happened, she was talking. She was fine. She was fine. It's she was sudden. Embolisms are sudden, blood clots are sudden, heart attacks, sometimes they're extremely sudden. They're fine, one person's fine, you walk in the other room, you would be surprised how many times, almost how many times, hundreds. Out of, I've done 150,000 readings, 60,000 probably are sudden passings without even a goodbye, and 40,000 are, you know, cancers or other diseases. It's more common for a person to pass with no warning and without a goodbye, it's more common than the other way around. Yeah. I just, I'm just miss all of us do. She says I'm still with you. She talks about like, she, there's like a sister, a brother, an yes. aunt, uh, the mom, a grandmother. Like there's a bunch of people still here, but she has a grandmother and grandfather on the other side as well. Yes. So they're with her. So please know that. She said I followed, oh man, I got the chills. She said I followed their car to the hospital, not the ambulance. And you were in the car and you were hysterical telling your son, your son was trying to keep you calm, but you were not calm. And you were like, oh my God, and did he call on somebody on the phone? Yes. Because she said I was in the car sitting behind them in the car watching them follow the ambulance and the guy was on her doing the CPR. She was already out of the body. So she was already gone. 
by that time, but they were keeping her alive mechanically. Yes. She was with you in the hospital and coming down the car ride, and you were upset crying and kind of screaming, and your son was trying to be not calm, but he was just calling somebody. And then the other, I believe this is the sister, the sister was also on the phone. Everybody was trying to get there. Yes. And it was literally, she was like, yeah, we were talking about pizza. Like, it was nothing. Like, it was the normalest day ever. Like, we were just talking about eating dinner. We are at time, love. I went over just because it was such a beautiful reading. I'm at 11.56. Um, can we go for five more minutes? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to start right now. Yes, of course. What she wants to say to her sister is, I love you. What is the nickname? Mac? Mac? Mackenzie. Mackenzie. Is it Kenzie, though? It's short. It's not Mackenzie. It's, like, short. He calls her Mackenzie. Mackenzie. Okay, thank you. Because I'm like, this is not Mackenzie. It's a very different name, and it's shorter. And she says, tell my sister I'm sorry she didn't make it. Was she trying to get to the hospital to see her, but she had already passed before she got there? No, she was there. She was there. We, but we didn't get to see. We never got to say goodbye to her. That's what I'm saying. She, but you were at the scene when it happened, and your, her sister was not. No, she wasn't. She was on the way to the hospital. That's what she says. She says, I got to hug your, like, hold your hand for a second, and my brother was there in the house. But then y'all were calling my sister on the phone, so what hurt, what, what Shell's saying is, I'm sorry you didn't make it to even say goodbye because by then she was she was already gone. I mean, she was gone. You know, she was completely gone. And just the sobbing and the oh my gods and the grabbing her hand, grabbing your hand and you holding, you know, Mackenzie and then her holding her sister and just crying and it was just brutal, horrible scene. And she says, I never forgot the sound of my sister crying. My sister was just so upset and just crying and it was just awful for everybody. She said she loves you so much. And please, she knows it's hard to be without her, but please, please, please don't grieve me like this because honestly, you're not ready to hear the other part of this yet, maybe in a few more months. But to give you the light side of it, she says, I wasn't in pain and it didn't hurt. The only thing that hurts me is seeing you guys in pain. Because you said since the day she was born and all three of your gift three kids? I have four children. Okay, so who's the other one? Do you have two sons and two daughters? Yes. Okay, so there's an older boy that I don't see? Yes. Okay. He's out of the house? Yes. So what's 29 or 32 or something like that? Uh, 24. 24, okay. He looks older. He seems older to me. Um, 